hi beautiful people welcome back to the channel today i'm going to do part three of the old master paintings that i've collected this is a segment on my channel where i scroll through all the artworks that i saved um, on my instagram account there is still a lot to cover uh, meanwhile, I've been adding and adding to the collection, so <laughs> this might be a segment that will go on forever. Um, if I have a hard time uh, finding my words today, I'm really tired and it's so hot in Belgium. <laughs> and uh, normally I have a fan next to me, but I'm not going to put it on because it might disturb the audio um so let's begin because i've got mm, maybe an hour before the kids come home from school so um erica asked me about these two paintings that i skipped in the first part i just skipped them because they're in a private collection so i'm not sure if they're public domain but of course i want to mention the artist and the painting the name of the painting the title um, this one is by Francis Coates Jones. It is in a private collection and it's called The Water Carrier. And I thought it was so awesome with all these lovely colors that I just added it to the collection. Um, but yeah, um, I advise you people to do your own research and see if you can find out if um, you can use it as a public domain painting i wouldn't know that's why i skipped it but it's 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 a very beautiful painting i must be honest um this one i think that's the one she was talking about uh let's get myself situated here on my cell phone Oh, that's also uh, by an American artist, an American Impressionist, um, Robert Lewis Reed. And it is called Blue and Yellow. It is a very beautiful one, not gonna lie, with the blue kimono. Um, blue and Yellow painted in 1910. So private collection, but 1910 might be public domain already. Um, now I'm going down to where we have left off. Boop, 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 boop. I'm going to hide this. Do, 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 do. Where were we? Look at that. That was all covered in the last. Yeah, that's where we left off with uh, Girls in the Meadow. Um, so now I'm going to scroll on my cell phone down, 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 just to be able to follow. Uh, and there I go. Where is it? Oh my God, there's so much. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, there I am. Okay, next paintings. I'm first gonna touch on the middle one because that's the one that really pops into my eye because I do uh, plan on making a custom of this one. I don't care if there's so much background, but this is just an awesome painting. It is magnificent. It's called Heptu Bidding Farewell to the City of Ob. Uh, by John Duncan, 1909, where you see this naked, long, red-haired woman on a griffin. It is just, oh, wow. <laughs> I think this is going to be the next custom that I'm going to do, because it has got something, yeah, of course, mythical, and it, ah, it is yeah i don't know the story behind this i should look it up um this artist is referred to 
as a symbolist by art critics and that might be true because symbolists as i told you already are people that uh, use lots of mythical and um, legends and everything m mythical things in their paintings so and that's my favorite style so this is yeah a custom thank you please um, here on the left, we see a kissing pair, and I thought it was romantic. I don't know, if I was going to do this as a custom, I would suggest you um, go over to a program that you can use. I believe Jessica uh, used Threadbare or something. Um, just to make the colors less dark because this is really dark and monotone or you can go for a detail of this one but I thought it was just so romantic so I added it anyways this one is um, Demon Love by Maximilian uh, whew, Maximilian Pirner it is a Czech painter apparently uh, 1893 oh very uh, victorian stylish yeah i do love it i would crop it like this and just give the colors a little boost so it's not that dark um and yeah on the right, oh, oh, <laughs> too much beauty in the world. This is um, Saint Cecilia. Um, on Instagram, it's actually a reel. I don't know if I can, I can play it, but uh, so I wouldn't know where the hands in the original painting go, like. On the reel, they go up and down to show you that the angel is playing the violin. But I wanted to check, uh, give it to you guys anyways, because I think it's so, so lovely. And you might recognize from the faces of the girls that this is a painting by our beloved John William Waterhouse, 1895, Saint Cecilia. So, um, oh, look at the wings of the angels and the hair. It's always like this same type of girls. I wonder if he had um, like models to, um, yeah, model for him. Very beautiful girls. And look at the dress. Oh, it's has got this softness, soft, yeah. And there's a red flower here, roses, and they're playing a lute. Was this a lute? But that looks like more like a violin because it has got a bow. Oh, I should know. I should. This is a violin, I'm sure. And this looks to be an organ type of uh, instrument or a piano or clavo symbol we say like with this strange sound uh see if i find it here no i don't if there are um new channels well accounts instagram accounts um i will put them down in the in the description because of course i thank the people who did all the work looking for this beautiful artwork I'm just sharing this because not all people uh, have Instagram accounts. So there you go. There you go. This aha might be also Waterhouse. Do, 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 do. Let me check. Yeah, Waterhouse. Oh, he has got this style yo it's really recognizable always the faces of the girls very this typical like this nose i don't know there's something in the faces of waterhouse that makes you recognize 
the the artist right away he's got his own style it's it's oh and this one is called nims finding the head of orpheus uh painted in 1900s so uh they're looking in like <laughs> a bit startled wouldn't you be if you found a head somewhere um yeah but um it would be interesting to find out all the legend and the the history behind it but i'm not gonna bore you with that um okay in the middle whoops sorry uh in the middle we have got doo -doo -doo. this is actually an illustration and you might find it too monotone to do a diamond painting of wanted to share it anyway because i i don't know it's mm, it speaks to me um it is an illustration by arthur Rackma rackham um for wagner's ring cycle siegfried and the twilight of the gods i believe that was an opera 1911 so uh, again here you could just adjust some colors if you have knowledge of programs like that or maybe if you have got a creative friend who can um, fill it in with some color for you anyways i think it's it's romantic i don't know what's happening there he could be uh trying to kill that girl for all i know but um yeah it is a lovely illustration again for this painting too monotone but i put it anyway some people might find it uh, a fun thing to do very monotone colors i know some people like it or you can just take uh, this detail but I, I don't know this has got something very spiritual and eclectic and mm, don't know cold 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 oh it's an illustration again for edgar Allan Poe poem the raven by james carling 1882 so illustrations those two but it's yeah it's the style that really appeals to me so i would certainly see what i can do with that for a custom okay next three paintings and i know this one has got a lot of lot of background but it's so interesting um because it is called solar solar eclipse over venice i think it's historically very interesting um because mind you those painters painted on a painting for months on a row and still be able to catch how a solar eclipse really looks like i think it's it's very very artistic very uh yeah very good work there so ecclesi di sole a venezia by ippolito caffi 1842 and uh, you can see all those people admiring maybe some of them are telling their, themselves that it's the wrath of God because, yeah, I don't know if they were aware of eclipses. Must be, must be, but... Um... <laughs> oh, history lies so far behind me that I should really um, look all this stuff up. But anyways, eclipse, very nice in the middle we see i think this is one that is 
well known to people if not here you go death and the grave digger so that is the dave uh, the dave grig <laughs> i was going to say the grave the dave griver or something no the grave digger and death and it is by carlos schwabe 1895 i think the way the artist made it seem like there's actually light in her hands or maybe she's taking the man's soul with her could be it is just marvelous how it's done it's it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the way the wings are wrapped around her and and the, the color of the dress and the wings i think it's and he looks up like in almost in admiration you would say and then the snowy graves here i thought it was awesome and for details you could always do like this of course nobody nobody expects you to go very big and and make the full painting you can always choose um, a detail of the painting like for example here i love this one um why because i love mermaids and because those mermaids are very interesting they've got um like not a full tail but like their legs go over in tails so they've got two mermaid tails here the same thing so um and there's a fisherman there on a boat i believe what is the um, Ein Fischer und Meerjungfrauen in der blauen Grotte of Capri. Fisherman and Mermaids in the Blue Grotto by Hermann Corodi, 1844. So I would do, oh, I would do like this because I don't think the full painting is something that is doable. I wouldn't know, but I would take like um, this mermaid as a detail, or maybe the mermaids, but um, very interesting. I'm always curious to see what people can do with old paintings and make them into a diamond painting by taking some details and, and working on the size and the colors and the schemes and, and yeah, very, yeah. Uh, interesting oh look at that beautiful face she's so gorgeous red-haired woman again many painters of those times had something with red-haired woman yeah i think it's beautiful um cold 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 water baby oh it's a detail i think it's a detail um by sir william samuel samuel henry llewellyn llewellyn um 1910 i'm just going to check if it's a detail because uh that's uh, i think this might be a detail just pushing my coffee aside because my desk is a mess water baby and then I put in Sir William Samuel Henry <laughs> Lola. Uh, we ah yeah, here we, we have it. I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay, it is actually Artnet. Do we have Tumblr Wikimedia.org? There we go. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So on Wikimedia, I always suggest to people to go to Wikimedia to have a perfect JPEG file because those are very um, 
high resolution and you can always see the size the amount of pixels so oh look at that that's, that's so beautiful with all the green and the way she's standing there the hair floating in the water you can see some sunlight coming from behind the trees oh wow marvelous 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 okay in the middle we have something that's a little more gruesome maybe also very monotone um artwork orphe by gustave moreau yeah gustave moreau that's an artist that you should look for if you want to find some beautiful art pieces um this one is 1865 um yeah so that must be the head of orpheus um who is standing there mm, i don't know but um detail i would chop this off and this and just go for this if you would want to do a horror horror diamond painting <laughs> but i love her face it's so um antique it looks like very roman romanesque yeah beautiful oh this one i was about to ask uh a custom of that but then i i said to myself it might be too detailed so i should look if i can find like a detail that works for a diamond painting but i left the painting in because it's such an awesome painting i suggest you go look for it and you just admire it <laughs> and watch all the details because it's oh it is intriguing, very intriguing. This one is called Satko in the o Underwater Kingdom by Ilya Repin. I think it's a Russian Ukrainian artist. Um, so there you go, Russian Ukrainian. 1876, Satko in the Underwater Kingdom. Look at that mermaid here. They bow as they pass. You've got a shark here. Here on top there is a man standing. And, and underwater sceneries, they have always fascinated me. This is... Uh, and it, this one is also one that calls for some ABs for gold of goldfish here lovely 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 so that's satko i don't know the story behind it again i should um look it up but if you go follow those accounts you can look for it look it uh, a little, little speak link speak look it up for yourself Oh, that sounded really snarky, but that's not what I meant. Oh, the romance is in the air. If it's romantic, because sometimes something that looks to be romantic isn't romantic at all. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. The End of the Quest by Frank Dixie, 1921 the end of the quest it's a medieval scene um let me check yeah um so again and yes i read somewhere like why are there so little men in diamond paintings and i concur there are not enough men portrayed in diamond paintings there should be because it's all women and men deserve their place on a diamond painting so you could 
choose the detail of this, but actually it's a very beautiful painting to do in the full. Of course, that would mean that you would have to go big to get uh, a good amount of details. But yeah, if you are willing to go for a very, very big project, oh, look at the hair and her beautiful face. Oh, and he returns from a quest, so I guess he's there to ask her for marriage or something. Sorry, wouldn't know. Would not know. Um, mythological icons. By Betty Yang. So, um, I hope I did not look it up. But I think it is a public domain. <sighs> but to make sure, Betty. Yeah, I don't use uh, captions. Is it captions? I always. Betty Young. Uh, what's the name? Mytholo. Oh, Jikol. Sorry, my brain is not following along today. Let me check if it's a public domain. Ooh, I don't think so. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, I think it is. Contemporary. Uh, what? Wait, let me see. Tumblr. Uh, yeah, I think this one is not legible for a diamond painting, so I'm very sorry about that. But. I know there's a, somewhere a painting of a woman with a unicorn that is so as soon as I find it I will get it to you. So this one goes out of the equation. So sorry. This one however I am sure yes that is an old master. Look they're floating angels floating and mm, it's a, maybe a bit too abstract to be a good diamond painting but i wanted to leave it in anyways because i'm fascinated by angels and um, this one is called cloche du soir evening bells by carlos schwabe 1891 you could do a detail if you would want to I just loved it. I don't know what it is about this painting. It, yeah. Uh, beautiful. But the next few. Oh my. Oh. This is so. I feel so sorry for that poor guy. Um, the date of the painting I can't find. I will look it up. The Comfort of the Fog by Wilhelm Kotarbinski. Uh, he died in 1921, so I think this must be public domain. I will look it up the year that it is painted. I'm not gonna talk too much about this one because mm, although it's 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 showing some comfort. It has got a very sad vibe that I don't want to uh, promote too much. But I thought it was interesting. But this one, look at that. Look at that. It looks very, very, very um, 21st century. But, but it's actually an illustration um, from 1910 and oh my god I was I was so in awe when I saw this one this is going to be 
a custom for me personally one of these days this is just too awesome i don't know if it will be possible to get it very detailed but i will try <laughs> i will cut off a part of the bottom i believe and some of the side not here because there are the wings this is called sphinx and chimera so that's a chimera that's a sphinx he looks up to her you've got these stars here she's um like spewing some fire and i don't know what's going on there i should look it up this is so amazing i'm going to oh my yeah i'm very fascinated by this and um that's why i couldn't leave it out it is just too too powerful and too modern looking and you can get it as a custom <claps> sorry <laughs> um mm -mm -mm. on the right we have a lovely scene by a very well-known painter Edmund Blair Leighton, 1902. I believe that's also the one. No, that's Leighton. Yeah, Leighton. I believe that's also the one who painted Flaming June. Eh, don't kill me if I'm wrong, because it might be a totally other different Leighton. But this is Edmund Blair Leighton, and it's a painting um, from 1902 called the end of the song she's completely falling for this guy i think he played harp harp oh my god what a wonderful instrument she's uh, yeah getting comfortable but here's the king and he watches it and he says mm, daughter you're not gonna waste your life with a musician are you which is sad because you can choose who you love. But anyways. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to sip my coffee because uh, it's getting cold, my coffee. And they say when it's hot out, it's best to drink um, warm drinks. So I thought this scene was just marvelous. Marvelous scene. Look that's some poor animal they shot i believe yeah <gasps> yeah this one you you will all already know but i'm going to go over it anyways doom, 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 doom. this one is one of my favorite paintings it is just marvelous. The colors are beautiful, very airy. Um, it is called A Dream, Voyage de Rêve, uh, A Journey to Eternity by Walter Crane, 1902. <sighs> That's just, look at the, the rainbow kind of wings on this angel and he's got this halo but that is the sun as well so very symbolic again you've got the white lilies here roses <sighs> yeah okay middle one middle one the accolade by edmund blair leeton um, apparently, that's also one of my favorite artists. <laughs> um, the Accolade 1901. Princess is... Um, who? How do you say it? Knighting someone? Uh, we say tot ridder slaan. Engels. Engels. Knighthood? Na. Nah. Tot ridder slaan. Mm. I'd knight. Oh, I was, I was right. I'd knight the man uh, that put an end to that deviant's life. Will you knight me? My father can make you a knight. 
I would have knighted you tonight. Okay, it exists apparently. So she's knighting this man. The accolade. What does accolade mean? Sorry, I'm I'm totally taking a detour here. Accolade. What is no no accolade? No, that's not what I mean. Accolade. Ingles. Hey, they say it's bracket, but that's not what it is. A bracket. Bracket. Ah, accolade. Anyways, I'm not gonna take you too long. You will all know what it means. I am left in the dark here. <laughs> Please comment. <laughs> comment. And this one, I believe, um, I saw it on Jessica's channel, Tiny Worlds of Wonder. I think she did this. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, yeah, yeah, she did it. I'm the Lady of Charlotte by <laughs> John William Waterhouse. Yes, 1888. I would chop this off, chop the, not her head, this and this and this. And not the boat. Mm, but um, I should check on uh, the website Tiny Worlds of Wonder how she uh, got it and where she got it as a costume. That part of the, it's oh wow, red haired women. Ah, that's just too beautiful. No words, I've got no words. Ah, this one became his most famous painting, apparently. I'm on the uh, most pa famous painting at the er age of 39. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, you're never too old. Bam, 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 bam. How long am I? Okay. This next one must be Narcissus. 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 Oh, so used to saying narcissists. Um, Echo and Narcissus. So this must be Narcissus who fell in love with his own uh, reflection. Eh, strange things. And it's also by John William Waterhouse, um, 1903. Not much to say there, but I like this a lot with the red uh what can you call it <clears throat> tiny tiny piece of clothing please dress yourself man you're gonna get a cold uh but yes i do like it because this this part of the painting is very realistic and then you've got like this uh more abstract so i think the technique used there is marvelous i don't know if the painting should be like this or if it's upside down let me check yeah there she goes again i hear you say but um those are things that um narcissus Echo and Narcissus by Waterhouse. Oh, whoa, Lenka, Waterhouse. Oh, it's a detail. There you go. There you go. So, that's the painting in full. Oh my god, if you would do this as a diamond painting, I believe you would go, f you would have to do it in two parts, maybe, or three parts. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be so logical because then you would have, but yeah, it could be like a three, a three, not a threesome. What I was, what was I going to say? <laughs> Anyways, three parts. This would be interesting. So you you make a custom of this, and then you divide it like this, and then you, or or here, here, and then you do the rest. Start with this one because before you get to that part, you you could get bored and you want to have something interesting to diamond paint. But yeah, that might be an option. Or just this part. Oh, that's a beautiful woman. Ah, yes. So this is a detail upside down. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> next one. It is an illustration. And um, the style of this just, it just baffles me that it's from 1919 and it looks so um, modern. And yet again, it looks, and it has got like a Japanese-like vibe to it. You know, the cranes that they draw in Japanese style uh, drawings. So I, oh, and here you have this girl um, called Earl Mars' daughter. I'm sorry if my pronunciation is, mm, let's not, mm. <laughs> but um, I try, I try. Earl Mars' daughter, daughter, by Arthur Rackham. 1919 illustration. I believe he was a bit influenced by Japanese art. I'm not gonna lie, but this looks awesome. Again, oh, this would make a lovely diamond painting for a birth. So good. Yeah. This one must be Waterhouse, no doubt. La Belle Dame Sans Merci. John William Waterhouse, 1893. Yeah. La Belle Dame Sans Merci. Um, romantic scene again. You could do a detail of this because, um, yeah, very detailed, very monochrome. But, uh, yeah. So I'm going to do three more and then I'm going to uh, call it a day because my kids are now officially within six minutes. They're officially out of school and then I'm going to try to get them some food and um, wait for them. So next three paintings. Um, I hope this is a uh, public domain. I wouldn't know, but I think so. This one is, I'm sure. Um, look at that style. <laughs> She's sitting on the horse like, come on, Vogue. Like, who do? It's... Um, an illustration by Kay Nielsen, published in 1912. Um, in a book called Old Fairy Tales by Sir Arthur Quiller Couch. So, K. Nielsen, 1912, would make an interesting diamond painting. The details, however, I'm not sure if it would work, but you could be for I was going to say bijvoorbeeld in Dutch, you could, for example, um, take the head of the horsey or the beautiful lady, but that dress is so gorgeous. So I leave it in there for you creative people that are planning to do something. Get creative, make it your own and just ask a custom again with romance and kisses. Hmm, yeah. Um, boo -doop -boo -doop. Romeo and Juliet, of course. Why didn't I see that coming? Frank Dixie, um, 1884. Romeo and Juliet. <sniffs> Sniff. Again, white lilies here at the background. But very romantic. I would cut off some of the diamond painting, but this may be like this. Just because of, you can see the background here, that's very interesting, but this part, I believe if, if you would do this, some people have the courage to do it. I have patience, but sometimes not the courage. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't bother. <laughs> that would give me a, a hard time. So yeah, but um, yeah, anyways, very beautiful romantic painting. The two lovers kissing. He just crawled out over the balcony. <sighs> um, and this one, last one. 
Okay. Oh. <gasps> Do you know how it's called? Cat skin. It's called Cat Skin by Arthur Rackham. Again, so that's an illustrator that I seem to like very much. Catskin from English Fairy Tales by F. A. Steele. So the right the author of the book and Arthur Rackham made the illustration. 1918. So, oh my God. This is so awesome. So this girl is walking around with cat skin, cat skins all over her. Uh, cat ears, cat ears, cat. Mm -hmm. She looks like a cat, but I love this so much. Poor cats, but isn't this? <laughs> this is so fascinating. I love this so much. I'm going to look for it just to to uh cat skin by oh uh, don't do by arthur arthur rackham just to see if i can find a uh, look so you've got you've got it in come on you've got it in different types of colors like you can, this one is, oh, wow. I would consider this, I would definitely consider this as a diamond painting. Not all this part, but just like, oops. I tried to, yeah, never mind. Um, but that's so beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, look at that. That's another one by the same illustrator. Oop. Eh. Okay, whatever. Never mind. This one. Suddenly the branches twined round her and turned into arms. <gasps> so, Rackham. Arthur Rackham. That's a name that you should look up. No doubt beautiful things so that's it for the video today um oh my god i've been in here on 50 minutes that's going to be lots of work to edit and and upload but you guys are all worth it i love sharing these beautiful artworks with you guys if you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so you can hit that subscribe button there you can hit the bell to get a notification anytime i put up another video this is it i will be back with an unboxing because my uh orders have left shop so yay thank you so much for watching this hope you have a beautiful artistic day and i will see you in the next one bye